a dedicated Disney person, um, from the dishes um, down to your friends. And the toilet paper. (laughs) 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 Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this whole thing is like, you know, it's been my whole life, you know, so, I mean, I guess I couldn't get away from it. Thank heavens (laughs) Tara is all for it, you know. (laughs) That and all of our our Native American stuff. This house looks like you're walking into a a, a teepee someplace. You know, I collect (laughs) all of this Native American stuff, but lucky Tara is Cherokee, so that worked out really well, you know. Nothing. Nothing like finding a, a wife that's uh, part Cherokee and she lets me get to buy with tons of Indian where, where artifacts. Are you? She's there. Are you there, Tara? Hello? She's there. Yeah. I've been trying to talk to her. I was muted. I'm here. Oh, Tara, I'm here. you are. Okay, you are. I, I had it on mute. Sorry. That's okay. Listen, I've got Dane Ann Monroe on here, and she would like to share on your first show. Is that okay? Oh, great. Good. Yeah. Dr. Monroe, uh, she's yes. a doctor. Yep. Dane oh, yeah. Ann Monroe. Dane Ann. Oh, okay, so I didn't know I've got so many people on here, but I can only handle so many <laughs> in my ear. I, I had to yeah. apologize to her. So, uh, okay. Well, uh, folks, I'm going to have to put a few of you on, and let's let Dane Ann uh, enjoy with Kevin. And I'll leave Kevin and Scott on with you, if that's okay, Stan, okay. and Tara. Okay. okay, and me and Rich, I'm going to try to do me and Rich and uh, Suzanne off for a minute. Okay, Suzanne? So we don't get feedback. <laughs> this is great, man. This is, yeah, this is fun. This is, this is mayhem. You talk about music mayhem in the mouth. This is mayhem. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, Jean Ann uh, has, been, has been one of the, the top supporters of entertainers at Disneyland. Uh, she's oh, an eye doctor, mm-hmm. actually. And uh, wow! But she loves coming out and, and enjoying all the live music out there. She's a musician herself, and uh, actually, she actually when she was young, she played tuba, so she's got to be okay. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it, it was between playing tuba and being a doctor. She made the right choice. I made the wrong one. I'm an operator. Okay, I'm not a I'm doctor. <laughs> Stay in all your co-hosts with your ACO Radio Club. We're now on mute, and now you and Tara have the floor. Tara. Are you on nine oh six? Is that your number? Seven one four. My number is seven one four six eight six. Oh, I'm turning off the wrong six eight six six eight. Okay. Well, I hope I'm on. Am I on? Yeah, you're on. And uh, here I am. I can add. I wanted to add another dimension to who these lovely people are. They're great humanitarians. They support so many causes. I think when we hear entertainers, uh, you know, are, are, you wonder about what these people are like, and they're just the best friends. They have a group of people that they gather around them, and they're so regular about staying in touch and keeping us all together. And, um, you know, I just can't even tell you what quality people you're talking to here. These are wonderful people. And Stan Fries is a musician's best friend, We've talked about this so much. You know, at Disneyland, you don't think about it, but you can go into that venue and stand literally three feet from someone who's a a quality musician that's just, you know, that's worked their whole life to master their craft and, and have that experience. And I don't know any musician that isn't just, you know, so grateful to Stan and the affiliation and everything. He hires, you know, he hired all these musicians for all these years, like 43 years. He's in the Disneyland Hall of Fame. He has no ego at all. Now, how many people do you know, and I'll say that for Tara too, that are at this station in life, they just have no ego at all. They're very harmonizing and loving people. They don't polarize. And I'm so blessed to be their friend. I mean, this this family is the real deal, and they have a loving family with grandchildren, and they include so many people into their and their scope and in their sphere. And I'm so grateful to be their friend, and it's just so great to hear them entertain, you know, in, interviewed tonight and everything they're about. So, Stan and Tara, thank you for everything you do for the world and for the universe. <laughs> and you're, 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 hey, Jean Ann, your checks in the your checks in the mail. <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love oh, you. Man. I mean, you really, you know, yeah, you, you're you, too everybody has different, but he's just, they're just the greatest people. You couldn't. Well, 
find two fine See, Dan, you you enjoy the musician, so that's why you enjoy kind of what we do with him because you're a musician yourself. But you know, you you really are a really good critic and, and source of of uh, of me uh, getting your example and, and your opinion of the different groups that we have out there because you know them all. You know, and you're a great musician yourself. But thank you very much for saying that, Gene, and that uh, no. I, I resemble that. No, I mean, <laughs> anyhow, thanks, Jane Ann, a, a whole bunch. You, That's nice to love you, you both. Bye-bye. Yeah, love you too. Bye, Bye. sweetie. Bye-bye. Dang. <laughs> that was I'm, nice. I'm going to do this more often, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this is great. Thank you. A- anybody yeah. there? Are you there? Hello. I'm here. I'm here. Yes, oh, I'm good. here. Can you hear me, okay. Sam? Oh, good. You know what? The best part of this is is that you um, you put it. You only put it on Facebook, and of course we have the AC, um, gosh, American Communications Online Blog Talk Radio for anybody to call in and talk to Stan if they can stand to wait on the board. But what a great opportunity for you to talk about a personal story and to tell us the details that only a person who's worked at Disney as long as you have and have lived the Disney life can share with us and. You really are an instrumental force because you brought the talent into the park that made it vibrant and alive and added to it. It wasn't like you went there for the music. You went there to go to Disneyland, and you got the music. So it's a great gift that you bring to Disneyland, Stan. And what are you doing today well, with I, Disney? Well, uh, I am nothing. We're closed. No. <laughs> I, am, uh, I, am, I am conducting... Uh, and doing clinics out there as part of a program that we have where uh, different public school bands, junior high, high school, and college come out, and they take a clinic uh, with somebody like myself, and we, I conduct them doing uh, music from Disney soundtracks, and then we actually end up, at the end of the day, we put them on, we record them, and they go home with them playing the music to a, uh, the soundtrack to a Disney movie. So it works out really great for the kids. I have a great time doing it because it gives me an opportunity to, to give back, you know. And so I do those. Sometimes I do three or four a day. So wow. uh, when, when the park kicks back, yeah, so it's not retired, it's retarded. But I'll do, uh, I'll do a few, you know, when the, when the park opens back up again, I'll be back swinging and, and it'll be a lot of fun. It's fun for me to be able to give back, you know. And it's fun yeah. for me to, I, you know what my job has been? My, my whole thing has been to showcase the wonderful musicians and entertainers at Disney. I don't do it for the money. If I did, I would have been out of there in a month and a half. I do it because I get a chance to, to showcase these musicians and entertainers, uh, their great talent uh, as a result of their hard work, and they're wonderful people. And without Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm, I do the same thing at Knott's. The, the, without that, you know, I mean, golly. So both Knott's and Disneyland are so happy and, and so uh, to have great talent, and the talent's happy to be out there. So I'm, I'm kind of a common denominator of all of that. Rather than to take a bow and say, ain't I great, I get a chance to take a bow and say, aren't they great, you know? And so that's been, that's been my mission. I've often thought, you know, this is really what I do, and this is what I enjoy doing, is letting the whole world know what great players these guys are, both at Knott's Berry Farm and Disneyland. So, so in, your, in your family... You have an up-and-coming great musician, a couple of great musicians, grandchildren. So that would be, uh, would that be the fourth or the fifth generation of musicians? So you have an up-and-coming musician in your family. Yeah. Again, talk about that for a minute, please. Well, you know, uh, Josh has four, uh, four kids that are in theater and doing really well in theater. And Jason has two sons that are in music in ten- Tennessee. How's that a name? Tennessee Freeze is 10 years old, 11 years old, and he's a great keyboard player and uh-huh. sax player, and he's got a band that he's in, actually, that is a great band. We went and heard him the other day. He is seven years old, and he is a drummer, 
So oh. it, it's crazy that these kids are coming up uh, because they want to, not because we're beating them up saying they got to at all. Uh, but they're both, you know, like really going to be outstanding. And it's, it's the kind of thing where, you know what, I don't want to get in their way. You know, I mean, they're in for a hell of a ride, good and bad, by being a professional musician. They ain't all, you know, roses. But, the, you know, the good parts are so good that it makes that life good. But the, both of these kids, as far as music goes, if they want to, and I think they kind of do so far, will be great players. And Jason supports them. Jason gives them a theory lesson. Here's Colt is seven, Tennessee 11. And he gets music theory, composition, uh, and, and, and Jason teaches them the jazz piano. And then they have a wonderful lady teacher that uh, comes by and, and teaches them the legit piano, classical piano. What's her name? Uh, Miss Sue. Yeah, Miss Sue. I don't know what her name is, but she's great. And so the boys take both jazz and, and uh, classical keyboard, and they love it. So... As long as they love it, it's cool. And the minute they don't like it, they can become a doctor. Uh, <laughs> that, that is really, yeah, that right. is really great. Yeah, that is perfect. So I think that a lot of what happens with a person's musical ability happens before they're born. Uh, yeah, while sure. the mother While the mother's pregnant, they're listening to music and they're learning music. And so I think it's an interesting advantage because they pick up so much through osmosis just by being present for the great music. And so I, I wonder how much of their talent is exposure and being in a musical family and talent and opportunity Break that down for me just a little bit. Talk about that. Well, uh, I would say that the majority of it is, like, are they really into it? Are they loving it? Is it in their bones? Do you have to tell them to stop practicing? (laughs) You know that you've got a a good uh, contestant for a, a good musician if you have to tell the kid, stop practicing, start doing something else, you know, and that's kind of what I had to do with my boys, and that's uh-huh. what they're having to do with Tennessee and Colt, especially wow. Tennessee, you know, you have to just say, come on, please quit practicing, and <laughs> and that's kind of the name of the game, you know, I, uh-huh. I wasn't quite like that in the beginning, you know, I, I was, it, it took a little convincing for me to practice, of course, I was lugging around a 25-pound tuba, that could have been part of it. <laughs> That's great. Um, I, I, I'm trying to remember. I don't know if I have this story correct or not, but was your father one of the people that organized the entertainment for the men the that Navy. were in World War II? Yeah, Navy, World yes, War II, the Navy. Korean War okay. II? Yes. No, he booked all the stateside entertainment, the bands and all, he, the professional stuff, for all the stateside Navy bases during World War II. Wow. So, and, and and he had a fellow working for him by the name of Charlie Farrell, who did, his, among other things, My Little Margie. Um, mm-hmm. But when he was in the Navy, he worked for my dad in that same capacity, hiring. So that's how my dad got to know Stan Kenton and Woody Herman and, and uh, all, all of those people uh, back then yeah. because he hired them, you know. So that was kind of a fun thing for him it, it, it was a nice job to have during the war. That's for darn sure. So, yeah, so he did all that booking, you know. Dan Kent, great jazz musician. I um, that, that was somebody who died in the 80s, and I actually heard him perform live once. So, who was that? Uh, what, Stan Kent. Oh, Kent? Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. There were some great big band musicians back then, big band leaders, you know. So it's interesting. The one reason I got the job, uh, 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 they asked me to be the the big band leader, was that we were we were hiring all the big bands out of Disneyland, but all the leaders were dead. You know, so it would be the Stan Kenton band, but without Stan Kenton, or it would be the Glenn Miller band without Glenn Miller. And so finally, we were paying all this money for uh, for ghost leaders, ghost bands. So they finally said, Stan. We're going to save a whole lot of money. We're going to hire you to do it, and so they call it Stan Freeze in the Disneyland band. But it's it uh, it was not making any sense 
for us, uh, us to hire all those bands. We did get the advantage of having their music.